So the first half of the Sportsmax Zone for this Wednesday, dominated by cricket. We're taking a detour now to football on the zone. What was a glittering field of 24 teams has now been cut down to eight as the Africa Cup of Nations, the most prestigious tournament on the continent, is now firmly at the business end of proceedings. Many pre-tournament favorites have made their exits, including defending champion Senegal, who fell to hosts Ivory Coast on penalties, and World Cup semi-finalists Morocco, who were knocked out by South Africa, both at the round of 16. Now that the dust has somewhat settled, let's see the four quarterfinal matchups. They will be played this weekend. Nigeria against Angola, Cape Verde against South Africa, Mali taking on the hosts, and the Democratic Republic of Congo taking on Guinea. These matches will be shown on Sportsmax 2 on Saturday and Sunday. Two of them on Saturday and the other two on Sunday. Now, not a field this that many would have expected coming into the tournament. Joining us to dissect the action so far and preview what is to come is our in-house football analyst, Lige Williams. Lige, great to have you on again. Um, as we said, a couple of surprises and a couple of teams expected to be in the final eight not there. I guess heading that list would be Morocco. Yeah, I think so. You know, a lot of people had them as the pre-tournament favorites. Um, despite, you know, all the signs pointing towards uh, a, a, another African team not winning in usually in these regions. But I think from the first game, the strength that they showed, I'm actually really surprised. Not necessarily that they haven't gone on to win it, but the fact that they haven't gone even further in the tournament. It was a, and especially to be knocked out by South Africa. And I think their performance really on, uh, against South Africa really summed up what they've been providing throughout the tournament. They were dominant. They created a lot of chances of the second most big chances missed in the tournament. The uh, first place I'll get on to in a bit. But yeah, I, th I think that they weren't clinical enough throughout the tournament. And I think that's what cost them in the end. Yeah. Um, we want to continue dissecting what has happened so far. But just on a sideline story, the Africa Cup of Nations for television hasn't been as high profile, obviously, as Euro or some of the other major tournaments that we've been looking at. But Sportsmax has it live uh, since it started. Um, how attractive has the football been, in your estimation, Lige, as a, as a TV product? You know, I, it, actually, I, I'm a bit surprised, actually. I think that the, the quality of football has been really good, and I think... That's just an indication of how football and especially coaching has been improving, you know, all across the world. I think that the teams have been playing some really good stuff. And you know, obviously you have some teams that play the smash and grab football, but that happens <laughs> everywhere in the world. I think that in terms of what people usually expect from African teams, in terms of a lot of running, a lot of pace, a lot of power, PMP as they would call it. But I, I think that the, the attractiveness of football and the product as well, especially how they've put it across and it, it, it was a late decision to make it go to Ivory Coast in the first place. So I think that in terms of the overall execution of everything that's going on, I think it's a really good product. And the unpredictability, yes. I think it's the most unpredictable tournament in all of football because, you know, a small, you know, just factoid, the eight teams in this quarterfinal, none of them made the quarterfinal in the last edition of the tournament. Wow. Yeah. So it's a completely new quarterfinal set from last edition to this one. So oh, that, that goes to show that it, how fluid and how and, and how closely, um, how good closely the, the, the teams are in the competition. So I think that shows that there's a lot of improvement in African football and that there's a lot of surprises in store for the rest of the tournament as well. Yeah, Lance mentioned Morocco, Senegal, another team that of course has surprised us with their exit. Any other teams, Leger, that you expected to be at this point in the competition and is not here? Um, definitely Algeria. Um, Algeria won the tournament in 2019, I believe. And this is now their second time falling in the group stages. They sat their coach. They've just been going through. They still have a lot of the players. And I mentioned in the, the first segment that we did previewing the tournament and a whole that the team was very similar to what they had in 2019. And that may have been a problem. They didn't seem to get off to any footing. And it just wasn't a good performance from them whatsoever. So I, I think they would, would be my biggest disappointment. Ghana and a lot of people would like to see them have gone further in the tournament, but I think without Thomas Partey, that was always going to be a, a big ass. So I think really Algeria, I would say, is the most disappointing team out of the ones that didn't make it into the knockout stages. Which team has surprised you most of all the teams so far? Oh, surprise! Definitely Cape Verde. Cape Verde, I think um, the, they have come out there unbeaten so far. They, they did really well in the group stages, two wins and a draw, and then they got out of their game. 
against Mauritania. I think they did really well to get the result there because Mauritania offered a lot, especially offensively. And it was a late penalty, a mistake actually that gifted them the win. So I think that they're a team to be reckoned with. They're flying high, a lot of confidence right now. We're going to see if they can keep this up in the quarterfinal stages. But I think they're the biggest surprise of the tournament so far. Yeah, you spoke about the poor finishing on the part of S Morocco yeah. um, earlier. I, I found a similar thing with Egypt when I watched a lot of their matches as well. Um, and generally in the tournament, a lot of the matches I've watched, the finishing has not been as clinical as you would want at that level. I just want to get your thoughts on whether that is an area that has been lacking generally in the tournament or has it just been the big teams who we expected to be scoring a lot of goals who were not producing? Yeah, I think um, Opta, Opta gave out a, a statistic sheet and since they started tracking the African Cup of Nations, I believe in 2007, this is the, at this stage, this is the most big chances missed in a single tournament. So yeah. you are right by that observation. In terms of Egypt specifically, I think while in international football, it's much slower, it's much player dependent it's because systems take so long of a time to really get in, embedded in a team. So in terms of them losing Mo Salah, someone who they move from playing on the right for them to now playing in a central space, he would be their creative and goal scoring hub. I think losing him, it was always going to be an uphill battle. I didn't but even when they had go. him though? Yeah, I mean, Salah himself was underperforming as well. He wasn't yeah. creating well and he wasn't, um, he wasn't finishing well either. Uh, even the assist that he got in the tournament was a miskick on his part yeah. in terms of the finish. But even Nigeria, Nigeria are going at a frantic, frantic rate in terms of missing chances. And th they've missed 12 big chances so far. And I think Victor Osimhen has been the biggest, you know, he, he's been the biggest culprit of all of that. Five big chances missed on his own. And a lot of people are saying that he, they're going to go as far as Victor Osimhen can take, the, take them. And, it, it, he has to bu bu buckle down now because he has one goal, one assist in the tournament so far. That's not good enough. Nigeria themselves have only scored five goals in the f their four games. But I think their defense has been shining through. And as a coach, as an analyst, you can look at these things as... There's two sides of the coin to it because at the end of the day, obviously you want a team to be converting the chances that you're creating as a coach, but at the same time, you have to be happy that the team is creating the chances in the first place and you trust that your world-class striker and your, and your other good players around him are going to eventually start putting those chances in the back of the net. So I think Nigeria are the strongest team at this current moment. Um, I think their midfield, what they've done with their backline and midfield has been extremely impressive as well. We speak about, you know, um, Alex Iwobi, uh, Arsenal Productions, of course, and uh, Frank Onyeka in the midfield. That's not a usual midfield partnership, but I think their mix of technicality and physicality, especially with their counter-attacking style, has been really good. Osimhen has been hustling and hurrying all tournament, not getting the goals, but he's still contributing. And then you speak about Ademola Lukman, who has been fantastic. Um, Simon on the right-hand side, and then off the bench, you have Ian Nacho. You have so many players that can cause a, 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 a real difference to this team. So. Nigeria are looking extremely strong. Despite the missed chances, I think their defense is the strongest in the tournament so far. And if they were just, if all they need is one game to explode. Hopefully that game doesn't miss them too much. <laughs> yeah, very much the case. So you said earlier that you were most surprised by Cape Verde and yes. their performance getting to the quarterfinal stage. How about this Guinea team? Yeah, you know, that, that's a surprise as well. Um, but I think that they've had a a slightly easier road because I wouldn't say it's a surprise that they, they pulled off the win in the round of 16 because they're the one of the better third place teams they're the best third place team so they got a role and then they went on to move and on that and that was against Equatorial Guinea yeah so that, that that's a big rivalry game for them and I think regardless that was always going to be a, a tough game so I'm not saying that Cape Verde are, are a more surprising team because of the quality of their displays I yeah. think Guinea are more grinding out the results. So that's why I would lean towards Cape Verde as opposed to Guinea. All right, yeah. let's rush through these quarterfinal matches then in terms of predictions and quick analysis. Um, first semifinal, by, first quarterfinal, by the way, all the quarterfinal matches will be live on Sportsmax and Sportsmax yeah. 2. The three o'clock game on Saturday, which is Congo versus Guinea, 
will be live on Sportsmax. All the others will be live on Sportsmax 2, the two games on Friday and the first game on Saturday. So game number one, Nigeria versus Angola. Yeah, I see Nigeria getting the win. I think it's going to be a tight one. Maybe a lot of goals involved because Angola have been really pushing forward and they're a really good attacking team. Two players with three goals so far in the tournament. So I think that one's going to have goals, but I think Nigeria is going to edge that one. Congo, Guinea. Ooh, that's, a, that's a tough one. I can see that one going to penalties um, or, or even being very close, being separated by one goal. Why, why not Guinea? Why not Guinea? <laughs> why not? They're on a roll. Um, Mali versus Ivory Coast. Yeah. No, that's a very good game. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's the best tie, best tie in the quarterfinal round. Because Mali are a team that I, I spoke about before the tournament. I was wondering why they didn't bring one of the best young stars in the world, you know, in Diara, but they've been doing just fine, I think. They are a really good team. Ivory Coast, they actually sat their manager at the end of the group stages because they came third. They got 4 0 from Equatorial Guinea, sat Jean, Jean Louis Gillet and, and hired um, Faye, Faye, I believe his name is pronounced, um, their former player. They got the win against all odds, really, against Senegal. And I think that midfield is very important to me. And I think their strongest midfield is the strongest in the tournament. And they're at home. I would say that they don't want to disappoint their home fans, but they already got four. But they're, maybe they're on the rebounds. So I'm going to say that they're going to get the edge over Mali. Yeah, and the final one is Cape Verde against South Africa. Some would say what an opportunity for South Africa to push on to the last four of the Africa Cup of Nations. Yeah, and especially after that performance against Morocco, they will be definitely trying to do that. But Cape Verde are also on a roll similar to Guinea. So my prediction for that game, I'm going to say Cape Verde will edge it in that game as well. Yeah, okay. four fantastic quarterfinal matches in the Africa Cup of Nations, as I said earlier, live on Sportsmax starting at Friday at 12 o'clock Jamaica time. That's 1 Eastern Caribbean time with the last quarterfinal set for Saturday starting at 3 p.m. Jamaica time, 4 Eastern Caribbean time. Keep it locked to your home of champions with the champion predictor, Leger Williams. He'll be back next week to talk us through the quarterfinals and look ahead to the semis. Thank you.